everybody. This is Lisa Larson, animal communicator, and I'm with Alicia Alatriste. Hi, Alicia. How are you doing? Hi, Hi Lisa. How are you? Thank you so much. Yes, I'm fine. Thank you. Good, good. Well, today uh, is going to be our last day of our euthanasia series. We had five, set out to do five of these. It was a little bit of a struggle along the way, but <laughs> we finally got to the last one. And what we're going to be talking about is once you've gone all through that and you've had to make those decisions and you've gone through the process and you've gone through those first days, now we're talking about some of the things that you have trouble with feeling your animal after maybe a long time. So I think that we have some questions from our viewers. Is that correct, Alicia? Well, you know, the first question here from, um, it comes from um, at Alexandra Patricio 2727. And her question is, when we lose our adorable animals, do they stay around for a long period of, of time or do they reincarnate right away? Reincarnate. Oh, reincarnate. Reincarnate. Re reincarnate. 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 <laughs> That's okay. We knew we when we introduced you, we said we were going to have a, a problem every once in a while, and and that's okay. It's yeah, reincarnate. You know, that's my attitude. <laughs> and she also say, I have heard from my family that they incarnate almost um, almost the moment that they leave their bodies. What is your opinion as far as your experience and concern about this? Okay. Yeah, that's a great question. I think a lot of people have preconceived notions about some of these things, maybe based on their religious beliefs, but I do not think that they immediately come back. In my experience, it can be years and years. Now, it doesn't mean they can't come back right away. I've seen isolated incidents of that, but for the most part, it can be quite a length of time in our frame of mind of what a time frame is. I do feel like, yes, they can. They don't always in this while we're still in our body, but they can. The one thing that I always find is that they say we will be together again. We'll be together again in spirit for sure. It may be, maybe I'll come back in this lifetime, but even if that doesn't happen, we will definitely be together in other lifetimes when we both have other bodies. But I also find that one of the things that they do is if they decide that they're not going to come back in a sh short amount of time, again, that's our frame of reference, is that they may send you another animal as well, mm -hmm. which I, I find, I always call it, they had a paw. <laughs> in, in sending you that animal. So, yeah, okay, we may, I think this is telling us that we're going to have to do a whole podcast on reincarnation. Mm -hmm. So yeah. let's <laughs> move on from this, this question yes. and, and move on to the next, but let's, let's put that on our list to talk about reincarnation in one of the podcasts. So let's figure that we will do a, a podcast on reincarnation. I agree with you. Then the second question comes from, um, Falling Water 321. Okay. And I think it's a he. I lost my cat five years ago and I can't let go of him. I would like to know, please, how I can feel him around me. Thank you. Okay. Yes. And I I know that this one is close to your heart because you lost Chiki six, six years, years ago. ago and you you feel very much the same way. It's mm -hmm. not that we all don't, you know, have have we never stop loving our animals it's just some people have a harder time getting past it than others that's mm -hmm. all um you know it it may be harder sometimes feeling them around after that long might be harder uh than right at the beginning uh but it's not impossible and um I think that, you know, one of the things that I, I, other people that ask this question, I think one of the first things that I say is, you know, trying too hard sometimes blocks that energy. You know, when you're focused, focused, focused on, you know, what can I see? Well, I'm not seeing it. The, the problem is you get so focused and what you end up being focused on is I'm not feeling her. I'm not feeling him. I'm not seeing him. I'm not, you know what I mean? It's like mm -hmm. you end up being focused on what you're not feeling or seeing. 
which ends up blocking the energy and making it harder for that animal to come through, you know? So, um, I, I mean, I think it's important for people to know that, you know, moving on doesn't mean letting go, you know, it's okay sometimes to feel happiness and feel things for other animals and, and, and all of that stuff, because, you know, it doesn't mean that you've let go of that, that animal, but I think sometimes people feel such traumatic guilt um, and such traumatic grief that they <laughs> feel guilty for even thinking about another animal or, or, you know, thinking about life without that animal or something like that, you know? So it's important for both of those things. I think you can continue to feel them. I think a lot of times, one of the things that you can do is, like I say, in, in addition to trying to let go a little bit so you're not trying so hard, you're not focused on, you know, end up being focused on what you're not feeling. And that's part of letting that go. And then the more you let it go, the more they, they're they able to come in. But I also think that you can write in a journal mm -hmm. and write to them and ask them, you know, ask them to visit you. Ask them to tell you how they'll visit you. Learn automatic writing and, and write that way. See if they'll they'll come through that way. That's that's one option. Um, you can get a you can have a communicator communicate with them. You know, sometimes I have had people who have had those problems, um, you know, like I had one lady that she called me and when I talked to her, I could have sworn she lost her dog the night before, but oh, it wow. had been four years. But she was that emotional about it when I was talking to her, but it had been four years. And after that reading, it gave her, it gave her a sense of peace. So I think it, 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 it doesn't mean that we don't miss them still. It just allowed her to get past where she was stuck. So yeah, you can, you can write in a journal, you can, uh, you know, sometimes it's even about having the faith of knowing how all of this works, knowing, having the faith of knowing that they are around you. You know, I've, I've said in other videos about, um, how spirit is still here you know a lot of people they think when when somebody goes when somebody dies i don't like that word dies but when somebody transitions they go off into some faraway place in the sky but that to me in my experience isn't necessarily true it's just they're right here we they're just vibrating at such a high rate we can't see them anymore so it's it's like everything in the world has a vibration. The chair I'm sitting on has a vibration. It's a very low dense vibration, but it's a vibration. We as humans and animals are higher and spirit is even higher. And it's like a helicopter blade. So that, you know, when you, you know how like when you watch a helicopter blade, if it's going slow, you can see it, but if it's going mm -hmm. really fast, you can't. Can see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's like that. And, and spirit is like that helicopter blade that's going really, really fast. It's not that they've gone anywhere. They haven't gone anywhere. They're right here. It, they're just not wearing their, their physical clothing anymore. So if, when, you, when you start to think of it in that way and start to understand on the spiritual level how that works, sometimes it becomes easier to feel them. Mm -hmm. because we feel them through faith, you know, and, and I'm not a religious person, so I'm always a little worried about using that word, but, <laughs> you know, but it is, that's what it is. It's, it's an understanding that they are here and it doesn't have to mean that we have to feel them every moment. It's an understanding that they are here with us all the time. In fact, going around places that, you know, with us where they never used to be able to go. 
which is something that I tell animals when I'm preparing them to transition that, you know, when you get on the other side, you can go with your mom to the store and, and on vacation <laughs> and all of these places, you know? So a lot of it is this, this having this understanding of how things work in, in and, and I, I, I hesitate to get too preachy here because I don't want people to think that I'm advocating that this is the only belief system. Mm -hmm. This is my belief system through the work that I do. You know, the this all of this that I'm that I'm describing to you. But I believe that it helps if you if you do understand it in that way, then mm -hmm. you don't feel like you have to feel them around all the time, all the time, all the time. You know, and when you do want to feel them, then you write in the journal or you talk to them or you, you know, and stop trying so hard to the point where you have a relationship with them in spirit. You know, you had a relationship when they were in body and now you have a relationship with them in spirit. Yes, but very important because I I create a relationship with Chiki in the spirit. She's yeah, she's she's just she's there and you know she's there. Mm -hmm. But I yeah. but I don't want to forget there there's an exercise that's that I just heard recently that I I think sounds really good. Um and it's for people who have this traumatic grief that that sta stays around for a long, 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 long time. And this was a therapist talking about it. And, and she says, think about that traumatic moment, like when that animal passed or something traumatic that happened to that animal. And close your eyes, do whatever, you know, if you want to meditate first, fine, do some breathing just to center yourself, whatever, but connect with that animal. and. In the grief of feeling that trauma and that traumatic moment, send out love and light, like a, a, a white light or a golden light to him in spirit so that you feel that you are part of healing that traumatic moment on his end. Huh. And in, a, in some ways, what that will do is it'll make you connect with him more or her, as the case may be, make you connect with your animal more. And in that way, it opens this up to feeling them around more. Does that make sense? I liked yes. it. I, I like can't it. say that I've ever done it, but I liked it. I liked hearing it and I think it would work. Yes. I agree with you completely. As a matter of fact, I want to try it too. <laughs> Very good. Very good. All right. And also, I don't know if you can just also um, go more into the things can people can see. So the more obvious signs. The most obvious, yes. Yeah, there, there's a lot of things that are the more obvious signs. And one is actually feeling them like brush against your body. I know when Makana passed, I would lie in bed and I would feel him pressed against my legs like he did when he would go to sleep at night you oh. know and it, it was like no no the other animals aren't around you know <laughs> i mean i know that i know it's not them so you can you can physically feel them you can um things like hearing songs that maybe remind you of them and this ha is this works with humans as well mm -hmm. uh, again once we get over to the other side there is no species there is no age there is no gender we're just souls and energy but we they when i talk to them they present themselves as they were mm -hmm. in the body that the person that i'm reading knew mm -hmm. um uh so songs you know some of the very obvious ones are things like birds and butterflies and dragonflies and feathers and pennies those are very very common so you know if you see these things and the minute you see them you think of your animal mm -hmm. that's probably them showing you giving you a hello you know um and in fact it's it's interesting because i have a client i my gosh, I've been working with her for probably 10, at least 10 years. And that's how long it's been since her dog passed. And um, one of the signs, one of the big signs that he gives to her 
is sending her dragonflies. And she calls me every single year on around the time that he passed. And we talk to him like clockwork every single year. So I have a, I have a relationship with this dog in spirit, <laughs> you know, and he has started sending me dragonflies. <laughs> <laughs> there was one time I was sitting in, I was, we were cleaning out the garage and this dragonfly came and, and he just hovered in front of me. And like, at first I was a little like, whoa, what's, <laughs> I'm not sure what's going on here. And then he, it, it's almost like he could read me. He flew back a little way and then he came and he hovered and he did it three times. And the, in, in the third time I realized, oh my God, that's King. That's mm -hmm. King sending me a message. And then um, I emailed her just, and that was several years ago. And I emailed her just the other day because we don't get a lot of dragonflies around here. Mm -hmm. And we were we were out looking at cars the other day, and there was a dragonfly that came around. And I, the minute I saw him, I knew it was King. I was like, so even even they're sending like that dog sends the, he always sends dragonflies to her, but he even sends them to me once in a while, you know. So they find the ones that they like, you know. I mean, Makana likes to send but butterflies. Kuba likes to send hummingbirds. You know, I know I have a, a, a client whose who's cat always sends her pennies, but then there can be other things as well. There will just be things that I'll say out of the blue that, do I really have to say this to this person? This, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it sounds really weird, you know? Um, and, and you know the animals will find the things that they like but yeah and and you can smell them you, you know there's lots of different ways but the key is the minute you think of them if you see something hear something feel something smell something you the minute you, and the minute you do it you th think of them then that's mo more more likely than not it's them sending you a message sending you a big hello in experience, um, I started when I was walking dogs, I started seeing all these butterflies. And I was like, why am I seeing all these butterflies in San Diego? A bush full of butterflies. And then like three or four days later, you emailed me and told me, those butterflies resang, uh, res resonate with you. I'm like, why? <laughs> Chicky saying hi. I'm like, I cry and I cry. So now, since that day to now, I see a butterfly, I'm like, hi, Chicky. Very good. <laughs> like Very good. Very good. All right. Well, I, I hope this answers some of the, your questions, some of out, out there, your viewers, listeners, you know, because I know that this is a really important topic for, you know, for a lot of you and, you know, and, and, you know, and, and I don't want to upsell myself. Well, I kind of do. I mean, that's why I'm doing the podcast, I guess. But <laughs> <laughs> but there's lots of animal communicators. I always want the people that call me. I want them to feel like I'm the one for them. You know, I mean, there's 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 lots of different personalities. And, you know, I I more often than not, I tend to feel that the people that call me, you know, they're supposed to be with me, you know, the people that call somebody else, they're supposed to be with them. So whoever it is that you call, do understand that you also have that option of, of calling an animal communicator. And, you know, you can speak to this, Alicia, about, you know, the, the peace that it gives you. But I do find that when, when I do spirit readings, which I will be honest, I love doing spirit readings more with animals more than anything else I do. I mean, I'm, I, I'm really good at doing the behavioral stuff and I'm special, I specialize that and all of the other things that I do. Um, you know, it's all part of my job, but I, there's just something, something it's really tricky. special about mm -hmm. being able to connect uh, an animal in spirit with their person and give them that kind of peace and comfort that they are looking for. Like my advice to everybody is like, uh, if they talk to an animal communicator, you, for example, they, it gave me so much peace. The pain went a little down because I knew that she was fine, that she was with me. And it's very important to be having communication once in a while with your animal in spirit. And and I really, uh, you know, tell people to call you because, you know, when you're one of the best animal communicators oh, that I know. Thank you. And, uh, and, and yeah, it's, it's the thing, the best thing that somebody can do for, for grieving and healing, talking oh. with animal communicator. 
Oh, well, thank you for that compliment. And yes, I, I agree. You know, I mean, that's how I got started in this, you know, exactly. I mean, that was the, my very first animal communication was when, when my baby Cairo was, we were having to put, lift Cairo up, mm -hmm. you know, and, and the peace that, that, that woman gave us, I just thought, my God, if I could do that for other people, yes. I, I just, I just thought that'd be the greatest thing in the world. So yeah so if people um, decide to to look for you can you tell us how yeah and, um pause talk.net p-a-w-s-t-a-l-k.net and all of my information is there you can uh you know if you want want to ask questions you can email me or 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 call me or all of the information is there on how to order and and takes you all through the process and everything so yes and then your you book that. is in your website too right yeah, it, my book is on my website. I also have a book website, pause talking the book.com. And yeah, and 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 I I do appreciate the feedback that I've gotten about the book in that it's not only people who want to talk to animals, want to learn to talk to animals. I've gotten the feedback that even even those who are just interested in how it works they've read it and they've told me that they learned so much about animals just through the stories and and through my explaining why i do things the way that i do and and that makes me feel really happy because i feel like one of the most important parts of my job is helping people understand their animals and animals in general and i, I when i read your book it was so clear that it took me like a movie Mm. So I went through the whole thing and just watching everything that you were saying. It was, you know, amazing. And you're an excellent writer. Oh, thank you. And um, so I, I guess people will um, have a lot of benefits reading your book. I, I, at least for me, it was really, really good. Okay. Thank you so much for that. Perfect. Well, thank you guys. If thank I you. really appreciate you all being here. If you are enjoying these podcasts, video casts, vlogs, whatever they're called. <laughs> I never know what to call them. I do have, a, I am putting these on a podcast as well. But if you're enjoying it, please go ahead and hit that like button and the subscribe. And if you want to be notified, hit the bell and we'd really appreciate that support. And we will be back. I believe the next one we're going to be talking about and Alicia doesn't even know about this yet. Yes, I do. Pet insurance. Pet insurance. Pet insurance. <laughs> yeah. Animal insurance, which I is a, is near and dear to my heart, and I think it's really, really important to do. So yes. we'll we'll talk about that. So thank you all very much. Thank you, Alicia. Thank, thank you, you guys all Have very, very much. And we'll see you again next time. Take bye care. Bye. bye, -bye.